In news from our neighbors, Zimbabwe's Coalition for Change spokesperson Fadai Mahere has been slapped with a $500 fine. She was convicted for spreading fake news on Twitter. Mahere was arrested in January last year after she tweeted a policeman beat a baby that was strapped on its mother's back to death. The court ruled that the tweet eroded the public's confidence in law enforcement agencies. Now, if she fails to pay the fine, she will face a three-month jail term. Fadai Bahere is the spokesperson of the Citizens Coalition for Change, and she joins us now for more on this. Fadai, very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Strong, pushing forward. Yeah. So give us a little bit of context. How did we get you? I mean, obviously, the background is that I published a tweet in 2021 uh, wherein I condemned police brutality following a viral video uh, that spread where uh, a police is seen having beaten up uh, a woman who was in a commuter omnibus uh, taxi. Everyone uh, in the video, all the bystanders, are heard to be saying that the baby's been killed, he hit a baby, and the baby's dead, and you see this woman holding the police police officer by the collar saying effectively you've killed my baby and when I tweet, tweeted in condemnation of that the police actually issued a public statement wherein they condemned the conduct uh, of their errant to use their own language police officer however that police officer was never uh, brought to book but I was arrested, prosecuted and now convicted uh, for tweeting about it. The state's case being that the baby didn't die although the incident is not uh, denied or disputed at all. What change, what prescripts of the law are they using? Well, uh, what's most regrettable is that the Constitution under Section 61 gives everybody the right to free speech. Uh, the section under which I was charged, unfortunately, was struck of our statute books many years ago, and there's actually a confirmatory uh, order to this effect uh, from the High Court in the case involving Hopal Chingono, uh, which was based on exactly the same facts, and the judgment uh, which condemns or strikes down this provision uh, or this offence as being unconstitutional and an unjust violation of the right to free speech um, uh, was handed down by the Constitutional Court but notwithstanding all those arguments which were very ably made uh, by my legal practitioners, the state um, or, or the, the the judicial office obviously found that I was um, guilty of the offence. I think this must be considered in the context of the wider crackdown against government critics and political opponents as we approach the coming elections. Uh, we know that there's an attempt to send a chilling effect to citizens so that people are afraid to speak. Uh, but as this triple C, we continue to say that everybody should have the courage to speak because that's a constitutionally uh, enshrined right. There's a $500 fine. If you don't pay it, you face three months in prison. Will you be paying it? Well, I paid it yesterday, but that doesn't take away my right to appeal against both conviction and sentence. Uh, and that appeal is being noted currently by my legal practitioners. There's also a review application that's actually pending in the High Court, which challenges um, you know, the findings around constitutionality and the propriety of the charge itself. So that's going to obviously uh, be dealt with in the future. I mean, obviously, there is a background of lawfare being used against uh, political opponents. We've got the case of Honorable Jobsi Kala, We've got the case of uh, Honorable Amos Chibaya, Honorable Machinga, a number of opposition politicians, Honorable Tendai BT, uh, a number of opposition politicians who are before the courts currently on what we continue to say are flimsy charges and are targeted. Uh, it's a clear pattern of conduct where we see a coordinated attack uh, against those who are perceived to be vocal journalists, teaching uh, activists. Uh, a number of citizens, those who are in, in the civic society space, all, that's all parts of an attempt by Mr. Mnangagwa's government to try and silence everyone. He's afraid of the election. He's afraid of the groundswell of opposition to his continued dictatorship, the poverty, the injustice, and the corruption. I mean, we can all see what's happening with the gold mafia, and the citizens are sick and tired of this continued injustice. And that's just it. No more is a title of a documentary appropriate than smoke and mirrors of this Al Jazeera documentary. We are waiting for the third installment. What is the mood in the country? What are officials saying outside side having mentioned a few days ago that they will be launching an investigation. Well, obviously, uh, the mood of the public is that, you know, it's unacceptable that in a country where 49% of the current 
country uh, of this population live in extreme poverty. You've got millions uh, being smuggled out. Uh, and I think the official data says that $100 million uh, worth of gold is smuggled out of the country every single month. And that could keep all our public hospitals running for an entire year. And yet we've seen a complete breakdown of social services, a breakdown of our public health system, a, a breakdown of our public education system, whereas Zimbabwe used to be the beacon of literacy in the region and, and on the continent, we now have a situation where 70 percent of uh, young students, young learners are failing their grade seven exams, which is, uh, you know, when they reach about 11, 12 years old. We also have a situation where initially the state was saying that this uh, gold mafia documentary is just a Western conspiracy and it's fake news, but they've completely changed their tone now. They're now admitting that a gold mafia exists. Today they say that they've frozen the assets. The Financial Intelligence, intelligence Unit uh, of the state has frozen the assets of some of the lower level, uh, you know, uh, people who are implicated have been frozen. The assets have been frozen. We haven't quite seen any action against some of the key protagonists uh, in the smuggling, uh, you know, ring that are alleged, the, the alleged perpetrators. We haven't seen uh, as well any criminal uh, investigation being launched. Uh, we all know that uh, one of the protagonists in that doc documentary was actually caught red-handed, uh, you know, smuggling gold uh, around 2021, or 2020, 2021, uh, around that period. And yet she was acquitted because the prosecution said that they didn't have any evidence to convict her. And yet this is something that's caught on the airport cameras. We haven't seen anything being done in respect of um, the ring and some of the, the, the persons who themselves, out of their own mouths, utter that they are the people who are plenipotentiary or autonomous or, you know, powerful, second only to uh, Mr. Mnangagwa. And so the citizens certainly hope that there will be a more dedicated campaign, uh, a more sincere prosecution, because it's not normal. It's scandalous for Zimbabwe to be losing over 2.2 billion US dollars a year to corruption, gold smuggling, illicit financial flows. And the citizens are sick and tired of this. And everybody That's is right. saying we are going to make our views known at the ballot box in the coming election. Fazai Mahere speaks for the Citizens Coalition for Change, an opposition party in Zimbabwe. Thank you very much for your time.